Um, okay, let's so try. Start, yeah. start with device. It's, the interesting thing about medical devices, and you've probably seen this as well, Anna, where you can have really high-tech products coming that are kind of newer iterations of something uh, that's been around for a long time. So there's always mm-hmm. going to be those sort of incremental steps, uh, in I think, in development of, you know, a better whatever. Let's say uh, yeah. a cardiac stent. I mean, cardiac stents went from being little springs that would open up the arteries to little springs that would open up the arteries to with, that were drug-coated to, to reduce thrombosis. Um, uh, so every incremental step, let's say, with cardiac stents is just a little bit, a little, a tiny little bit better. Um, I think the real, mm-hmm. the real game changing, I think, in our industry is going to come with um, maybe actually growing human organs. So we're no longer going to be fixing them. We're going to be using stem cells and growing organs. And I think that's, mm-hmm. I, I don't think that that could be within 10 years. Who knows? Um, I think a lot of the traditional devices, it's amazing. And you've probably seen this too, Anna, when you read the history of certain surgeries and you go, oh my God, they've been doing this thing for 500 years. Like literally, you yeah. know, nobody washed yeah. their hands. They used, they'd practice yeah. the cadaver first and then they, <laughs> half the patients mm-hmm. died because of infection. But they yeah. they knew enough to take a gallbladder out if they had to take a gallbladder out. So it went from yeah. an open thing where, uh, you know, the patient was writhing on the table and likely being massively infected to, you know, doing a really quick lap coli today where, uh, uh, you know, where it's, quick and and you know they're all they all turn out uh, so i think yeah so i think we're going to get away from my I, my prediction is that we're going to get away from fixing things to putting new ones in Replacing. and they're going to be it's going to yeah. be your body it's not going to be harvested from a cadaver or harvested from from a, a relative it'll be your mm-hmm. um your your body so on the technology so it's going to be and i think it's going to be uh there's going to be a huge uh, uh, leap when we get to that point. It's not going to be just iterations anymore. It's going to be, boom, this is the next thing. Um, Mm -hmm. In terms of sales, I'm thinking that will become um, highly specialized and probably highly centralized because there will only be a few companies that can really uh, do that. So so as a sales person, your job may be to, to not only you know, present the technology, but to be part of the team for maybe get it, getting cells or getting something to, to mm-hmm. put this together. We see this, I think, currently with some devices where uh, they're custom-made devices. They may not be human tissue, but let's say um, somebody has a custom-made mandible. Uh, so yeah. you go in and scan the patient. Uh, you'll be mm-hmm. part of the team as the rep. The mandible, the measurements are sent to the lab. They're made out of the material of choice and then sent back. So you're again, part of the team. So I think the days of just going in and, you know, here's what I've got. And, uh, you know, do you want to buy some or not are going to be over. It's going to be very specialized and you're going to be integrated in the team with, with the physicians. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I also think, that the sales process will change drastically in the sense of it's not going to be just one person selling. It will be more of a team approach. It will be the yeah. company, maybe an engineer R and D team part of the selling process. That's something that I can envision too, because I think the more complex we get, the more complex solutions we have to present to customers and to people. And like you said, like if you need to replace mandible part of the cranium, it's already a team of people, like an engineering on one side, the salesperson on the other side, doctors, so it will be much more um, complex selling process versus just like you said. And here's well, what I we think have. More, this is the offering. Yeah, and collaborative as well. So, however, mm-hmm. having said that, I mean, there's always going to be a place for sort of more traditional type um, devices that I think will never go away because not everybody's going to need to have a new pancreas. Let's say, um, you know, there may be mm-hmm. just a repair. I mean, sutures aren't going away. I don't think we'll be seeing yeah. sutures. Uh, till the end of time people have to get stitched up right but the question i would have do you think we will need people to sell sutures or it will be more of a we're going to go online and shop online and choose it online versus talking to a person because that's another trend i see after the pandemic yes. and i don't know if that's what you yes you see as well yes unless i think the the days of, of sort of um uh very specialized sales are going to go away for those mm-hmm. s- sorts of products that are more commodity type products yeah. Uh, and you're yeah. definitely right. I think the pandemic is what kind of made that happen because they realized like, oh, wait, we can, uh, you know, just go to this 
supplier and buy all of these things. Mm-hmm. And I think too, there was a time when buying groups were kind of the thing and everybody was trying to get into the buying groups and have your products listed. I think it's probably going to be a more open marketplace where buying mm-hmm. groups may not be quite as relevant. Yeah. But what do you yeah. think companies will do in that case? Do they even need salespeople or how are they going to compete if they have relatively similar product? And you know, I, think, I think you always need, because at the end of the day, the surgeons, the, the physicians, uh, they're going to be human beings. And I think human beings mm-hmm. always want to speak to human beings. I have an interesting anecdote. A, a buddy of mine um, built a company and they ended up selling it to, to IBM for, uh, it was a tech company for about 600 million. It was a huge, uh, a huge sale. And uh, mm-hmm. this guy is the least techie guy I've ever met in my life. He doesn't even, to this day, does not even own a, a, a phone. And that's sort of by design. But, you know, he made a really good point. He said, when he was raising money in Silicon Valley, he said, it doesn't matter how much tech you have. You have to go and shake somebody's hand. And I think that we still yeah. crave that as human beings when it comes to, especially things that require a huge amount of trust. I mean, we have to look the person in the eye and, and you know, and, and know them. So mm-hmm. there's always going to be a place, I think, uh, as a salesperson, it will be definitely more collaborative with a team of people, but there's always going to be that sort of lead that has to go in and make the original uh, initial contact. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But do you think COVID changed that part, the handshake part? Maybe it's not as important anymore, or you still think we're back to normal and oh, people will... Great question. Go- <laughs> and, I, you know, it's, it's tough, I think, for you and I, because we have been in this industry pre-COVID. So we have our mm-hmm. connections already and somebody can call you and say, Hey, Anna, um, I need yeah. this or I want to talk to you about this. And they know you already because you've done that legwork in the past. So yeah. tough yeah. question. I don't know how to answer that one, to be honest, because I'm coming from a bias of already being kind of in the door, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. However, I can say this, that, you know, the first time I did a, a zoom call where I was in servicing a product, uh, for a group of, um, I think it was a group of nurses, uh, it was very seemed very very strange, but then after the third or fourth time, I thought, "Wow, this is actually really efficient because I'm doing a an in service mm-hmm. for a group in Regina. I'm doing it at home. They can yeah. zoom in to see my hands manipulating the device to see how you load the device and do all these things. So it became probably more practical than standing in you know a treatment room at the hospital, Far trying, away. right, trying to go through it with the staff. So um, I think certain things, yes, and, and it's forced everybody to adopt more technology and, and and it'll shake out we'll figure out what works and what doesn't work because it'll we'll have to mm-hmm. but i think there's still always going to be somebody a point person going in and, and making connections mm-hmm. and putting the the getting the balls uh, the, the wheels in motion 